As you might or might not know, I'm a lifelong diehard Dallas Cowboy fan. My uncle took me to my first game way back when, 1961, the old Cotton Bowl, Dallas, Texas. Cowboys versus what were then called the St. Louis Cardinals, and I got hooked by those stars that used to be on the shoulder pads as well as on the helmet. And I'm infected, I'm inflicted. I, I can't help myself when it comes to my Cowboys, as you know, from watching Undisputed. No one on television has defended and applauded Dak Prescott more than I have. And no one on television has been more frustrated than I have by Dak Prescott. I have loved and I have feared Dak Prescott more than any human out there. I am here to make the case. I have resolved. I have decided that Dak Prescott can be better than Tony Romo. He can be even more clutch than Romo often was. And I also believe that Dak Prescott can be even worse than Tony ever was on his darkest day and low, lowest moment. There are times that Dak Prescott plays like the fourth overall pick in the draft. And there are other times, unpredictably, unexpectedly, when he plays like the fourth round pick that he actually was. His first name is spelled R-A-Y-N-E, Rain. Sometimes I spell it R-E-I-G-N as he reigns over the National Football League. And sometimes I spell it R-A-I-N as rain on my parade on Undisputed when I talk about my Cowboys. For me, it all started quite a ways back, 2014. I was attending a friend's wedding, Sarasota, Florida, staying at the Ritz-Carlton. And that Saturday morning, fall weekend, I got on the treadmill in the workout room, and I'm flipping around because I'm trying to find number two versus number three. I wanted to find that game, which was Auburn at Mississippi State, because I was intrigued by the quarterback at Mississippi State and bits and pieces I'd seen him so far. His name was Dak Prescott, and did he ever put on a show as I ran on the treadmill? I got faster and faster. He got better and better. I loved his body language. It was not in my house body language aimed at Auburn. They took over the game because of Dak Prescott. It was 21 to nothing on the way to 38 to 23. And would you believe Dak Prescott lifted Mississippi State, as in my days at Vanderbilt, we called him Mississippi State, lifted Mississippi State to number one in the nation that week. My guy, Dak. Back on Undisputed that Monday, sorry, it was then first take actually, but I'm still going to call it Undisputed, back in my old days at ESPN. It's the show that morphed into Undisputed, but back on first take, I raved about Dak Prescott. He was my man and my guy, and pretty soon, my guy Dak led number one ranked Mississippi State into Tuscaloosa to take on number five ranked Alabama. I'd been all over Johnny Manziel couple of years earlier, 2012, the show he put on at Tuscaloosa turned St. Nick into Ain't Nick that day. I thought Dak would do the same. So on first take slash undisputed, I proclaimed that Dak would turn the tide at the tide. And that day, Dak threw three interceptions and he looked overmatched and ultimately overwhelmed. But late in the game, guess what he did? You Cowboy fans will appreciate this. Out of nowhere, he pulls off a 72-yard drive in 13 plays, touchdown pass late in the game, 15 seconds left, four yards, cut the score to 25 to 20. It was over. They lost, but it sounded good, didn't it? Dak was a warrior in that drive, but they lost. Omen, sign of things to come? Maybe, but I thought... My guy, Dak, at least he battled to the bitter end. Yet I had to eat a bunch of crow on Undisputed slash First Take that next Monday morning. And 
My guy, Dak's team, slid right into the sunset, lost three of its last four. The following season, <clears throat> Dak's Mississippi State Bulldogs lost four SEC games, and I forgot about him. Until the Senior Bowl, I happened to flip it on, and wow, there's my guy, Dak. Hadn't thought about him for a while. And all he did that day was win most outstanding player at the Senior Bowl. Guess who the coaching staff was? Oh, Cowboy coaching staff led by then head coach Jason Garrett. Later found out they fell in love with Dak that week. Later found out that they convinced Jerry Jones, you got to take a flyer on him, even if it happens to be in the fourth round. I couldn't figure out why Dak fell all the way to the fourth round, but did read that he had a DUI, but the charge was dropped because of invalid sample. That's what I read. But I thought, is it because of the DUI, a red flag? Did he fell all the way through round two and round three to round four? I don't know. I tried to justify it. I tried to rationalize it. And then undisputed happened. I left ESPN, came west, out here to Los Angeles, California. And even before Shannon and I launched undisputed, my Cowboys played two preseason games. First one was out here at the Coliseum against the Rams. Wow, Dak Prescott and his little cameo that he got, took the game over. Whew, boom, right down the field, scored. Wow, I like what I saw. That looks so much better than Romo's been looking. Then at Seattle, guess what? Right on cue, eggshell Romo got hurt. Dak went in. First team, Legion of Boom, playing like it was a playoff game. Dak stood up to the fire. In the brimstone, took over the game. First day of Undisputed, September 6th of 2016. That Monday, we launched. I told Shannon Sharp across the debate table, Dak Prescott is my guy. He's going to turn around the fate of my Dallas Cowboys. And Shannon looked at me like I had mad cow disease. And I stuck by my guns. And they went 13 and three, did Dak's rookie year team. 13 and three? Whew! Greatest rookie year ever, I proclaim. Uh, now I look back and I say, hmm, maybe it had a little bit to do with Zeke averaging 106 yards rushing a game, which easily led the National Football League. He has now plummeted this year to 57 yards a game as he has gone down, down, down all six of his years. Oh, but that's another story. But Dak got 106 to back him up as a rookie. And those two children, a child shall lead them, led them all the way into the playoffs. Dak played great in that playoff game against Aaron Rodgers, threw for 305, three touchdowns, brought him all the way back to 31 all. It took two intergalactic hand of God field goals by Mason Crossbar to turn the tide against Dak. I hope you enjoyed that video. You ready for more? Make sure you click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from The Skip Bayless Show. And don't forget to check out the full episode of the show wherever you get your podcasts by clicking the link in the description.